So the question before us is, can the unseen therapist remake bones, tendons, and body parts? And here to help me today is Gabrielle Rutan, MD. She's a doctor, and she's also the, um, the director of the Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in the Dutch language. So what about this question, Gabrielle? Can the unseen therapist regrow body parts and remake things and all of that? I mean, these are seemingly, belief-wise, impossible, are they not? Uh, yes, if you follow the, the, the standard beliefs, so to speak. But um, yes, of course she can, I would say. All right. Well, then how come how come people that lose a leg and arm or fingers or something like that don't grow them back? Well, because unfortunately we're not a salamander, so we are not used to growing them back. Um, I don't mean that, you know, it, it not as a joke, but um, our beliefs, your belief system defines what is possible. And that is very strong. So there's lots of beliefs that would go against that. And and it does go against that because it's, um, you know, there's lots of um, examples where you would go, see, it isn't growing back. But on the other hand, there's also quite a few examples where regeneration and uh, growing back of organs or tissues has happened. Well, I'm... I'm living an example of one of those. Uh, this is like how 30, 40 years ago or so. Um, I had a degenerated L5 S1 disc in my back. All right. I was having sciatica. Uh, tennis was playing tennis was a problem for me. Running was a problem for me. And so my, I had a good friend, orthopedic surgeon, who took some x rays and he showed me, he showed me how my. L5-S1 disc is degenerated, okay? And how it would continue to degenerate, and I would eventually, his words, beg him for an operation. Well, I'm in my 30s at the time. I, just, I didn't particularly care for that news, okay? But I bought it. I bought it. I, yeah. I, I didn't know what the unseen therapist was at the time. It will before any of that, or EFT or any of that. So I, I mean, the white coat told me that. The doctor told me that. That's just, he said, that's just what's going to happen, and it's it's impossible to grow it back. So I bought it. Time went on. I had my spiritual experience. I began to use EFT later on and so on, but I wasn't really aiming at um, mm. that L5-S1 disc because I bought you couldn't take care of it. Okay. Um, but I... I did a lot of work on unresolved emotional issues, resentments that I had and guilts and angers and stuff like that. And little by little, little by little, my back issues faded. Um, I'm 82 as we sit here today and I don't have any back problems whatso whatsoever. So, but I did have a few years ago, just out of curiosity, I had my back x-rayed, that L5-S1 disc. And instead of being down to like a three or what, that was what my, my orthopedic yeah. surgeon friend was predicting. It was an eight or nine. It actually regenerated. It, 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 it most certainly went down because I could feel it. Okay. I don't know what it went to, but then back up. So it regenerated, impossible. Yes. But while I bought it along the way, you know, er early on, I wasn't along the same way, along the same lines, saying, "Oh well, it's impossible to regenerate." I, they were not in the same concept. It's just okay. The doctor says, exactly. "Okay, I'll, I'll leave that one be." But I wasn't saying, "Oh, it's impossible." Oh, it's impossible. Oh, it's impossible. And I think that is very important because uh, you, you you need to look at your limiting beliefs and even you were you weren't focusing on oh I lost that tissue and it won't come back and all that but you did work on emotional issues and that's yeah. key here. So 
or, you know, in general, doctors uh, will discuss stuff and look at patients that have not worked on their issues. They don't ask for it. The doctors don't. They don't, you know, suggest that people go work on their emotional issues. Although, you know, recently there's more and more interest in stress and what stress uh, does to the body. However, if you don't resolve the underlying root causes, the emotional root causes of whatever is happening, then not very much will happen. On If you, on top of that, have limiting beliefs, um, you know, expectations are low, so to speak. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's strange because we all expect bone to heal. If a bone breaks, we consider that normal, that the bone tissue generates, regenerates itself and forms a nice big, uh, plug to to heal the the fracture so that we expect also lesions in of the skin if you fall and have a lesion or the, the the surgeon went through your skin to get to get somewhere we expect it to go together again yeah these are all the same types of um mechanisms really yeah um on our on our impossible healings list on our website there are a number of things that, that counter you know, this belief about we cannot regenerate things. One of the lady named Rita, who had both a serious hearing issue and a serious vision issue. Now, her thing was just almost immediate and overnight, and that doesn't happen with everybody, and it has to do with readiness and a whole lot of things, and, and there's some mysteries about this. But she had major recoveries of both of those. Now, I'm not a doctor like you are, uh, Gabrielle, but Am I am I correct in assuming that something regenerated in her eyes, something regenerated in her yes. ears? Most certainly, most certainly. I I recently worked with somebody with glaucoma, and typically glaucoma also that you know the, the doctor says it's chronic. You need to you know use medication for the rest of your life, and we resolved the underlying emotional issues, which were very visual. If your if the eyes are involved. Right. Uh, the trauma is very visual, glaucoma gone. Doctor doesn't believe it, but it happened. And yeah. again, you know, the tissue re regenerates and the eyes turn back to normal, so to speak. It yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, this gets in a little bit of the um, advanced use of the unseen therapist in our in our uh, our advanced uh, course, the optimal EFT course. And by the way, there are links to a free ebook and a, my newsletter and, and our advanced course and so on at the bottom of this newsletter. But uh, one of the co concepts involved in there is that we have free will, meaning the unseen therapist isn't going to interfere with our our right to believe whatever we want to believe. If we want to believe we're a separate body instead of the oneness, fine. If we want to believe it's impossible to regenerate, you know, tissues and things like that, we can believe that. If we want to believe our abusive father is just the, the world's worst thing that ever happened on the planet, okay, we can believe that or we can be open to other things and so on. But she will not interfere with our free will to believe as we choose. And as we are born into this world, we are given beliefs by the authorities in our lives. Our parents, who are echoing all kinds of beliefs, our teachers, our doctors, and on and on goes the list. And so we just believe these things. Yeah. And don't underestimate internet and television. All of that. Boom bombarded with explanations that you know are nowhere near the truth but we believe it we keep telling it uh, to each other and yeah. uh, so. it's it's limiting beliefs that is the problem and if we believe it it becomes true for us yeah. and when everybody believes it it becomes true for everybody but what we're finding with the unseen therapist is we're starting to chip away at some of these beliefs and there are some things that happen that just go beyond what the beliefs really are now this, this next example we're going to give about beliefs isn't really about optimal eft or the unseen therapist anything but it's a it's an excellent thing you and i talked about before and that's this thing that happened in the 1950s 
when Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile. Now, the belief at the time, I remember I was a teenager at the time. The belief at the time was breaking the four minute mile, it is physically impossible to do. And I remember seeing articles in the newspapers of the Times. And it, it had pictures and examples by doctors and quotes about how the human body could not possibly process enough oxygen for someone to run a mile in four minutes, to break the four minute mile. It was a barrier, it was an impossible barrier. And Roger Bannister was saying, no, no, I can do it, I can do it. And then one day Roger Bannister did it. He broke the four minute mile. All right. And now the world's belief about that possibility shifted because somebody did it. <laughs> and nowadays, nowadays, if you are trying out for a college track team, you better break the four minute mile. You may not make the team. Okay. <laughs> so once that belief barrier gets broken, ah, here comes some more. I can remember in the Olympics, uh, high jumping seven feet mm. was considered to be impossible. And now I, I, either, we are either approaching eight feet or we've done eight feet. I don't know what it is, but that's a whole lot more than seven feet, you know, jumping over and so on. So all of that has to do with our beliefs. And so the thing, yes. uh, thing I probably want to leave folks with here, uh, anything else you want to mention, please do. Is that we're aiming often at the beliefs that are in our way. And not always, but we are chipping away at those beliefs. More and more people are doing things that aren't supposed to happen. You know? mm. So anyway, any more thoughts on that, Gabrielle? Just quickly that um, uh, because this is, you know, sports event, but for chronic physical issues, chronic diseases, like, for example, uh, multiple sclerosis, the belief is that it's, you know, progressive and you can't, you, you can't overcome it. However, I've already worked with two clients that had an official diagnosis of MS and all the symptoms are gone and they don't, you know, the, the diagnosis doesn't fit anymore. Yeah. So another belief that went out the window, which is good. Well, along those lines, uh, one of our um, members is also a doctor from Greece. He has MS, oh, and his, yes, yes, yes. his symptoms are starting to fade. They're not gone yet, but they're starting to fade noticeably as he aims at emotional issues and so on. So the impossible, yet again, is rearing its head. <laughs> okay, so. Gabriel, anything else? This is good, I think. All right. All right. Thanks for listening in, everybody. I hope you got a lot out of this. I certainly did because, you know, I always love talking to Gabrielle and I learn as, as well as you do. So anyway, see you next time. Mm -hmm.